Hello, this is Movie Night Movie Review. Vincent's pick tonight is David and Lisa. The movie is from 1962 and stars Cara Dulay, Janet Margolin, and Howard De Silva. And uh, this is the Cara Dulay that was also in the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. I had never seen David and Lisa before, but I was interested because what I read was that this was about a troubled young man who was afraid of being touched, who enters a home to help people, and he meets up with a girl there who speaks in rhymes. And I thought, boy, this sounds too good to pass up. So I wanted to sit down and watch this, and I was really surprised at uh, how good a movie this is. So Care Du Lake plays the, obviously the character David, and I thought it was kind of funny that here he is playing a character named David again, because that was his name in 2001 in Space Odyssey, David Bowman. So here he is playing another David. And he is really well cast for this movie. Um, he's got that clean cut, very straight lace kind of uptight look that his character demanded here. Uh, it just seems like he broke the mold on playing this particular character. This cannot be redone. I'm not a psychiatrist, but David appears to have a, se a severe OCD. He doesn't like to be touched. If you touch him, he freaks out and he thinks you're trying to kill him because he's also a germaphobe. And he also has a number of other issues and mental health issues here. And that's why his parents sent him here. And this is a very well-to-do place. This isn't a, a regular government institution. This is some, somewhere you send rich kids. The actress Neva Patterson is his mother who does a terrific job. She's a very versatile actress. I've seen her pop up in TV and movies before. And uh, on the left is Howard De Silva who really uh, owns this role as the psychiatrist, therapist, whatever he is. Uh, he really owns the role and did a wonderful job with this part here. Very uh, interesting actor. Now David uh, encounters Lisa as he arrives, and uh, this at its heart is essentially a tragic uh, love story. Uh, but I, I put tragic in quotation marks because it may not be as tragic as you know most of most of those kind of stories are. But uh, essentially, it's a tragic uh, love story of two troubled people who find each other. Now another issue that David has is he seems to have an obsessive preoccupation with time. This is an interesting aspect of David's personality and you'll see how this plays it out and why he is uh, obsessed with time. I don't want to give that away, that would be somewhat of a spoiler, it might ruin it for you, but uh, it's a fascinating conclusion to this uh, aspect of him. One part I thought was fascinating is David approaches Dr. Allen with uh, his idea he has for a incredible machine that he wants to build, uh, something that always keeps perfect time. And he has, he spends a lot of obsessive time drawing and cr trying to create this thing, and it's his own personal project, it's a secret, and he confides in Dr. Allen about it. And uh, it's kind of interesting because I think we kind of have something like this now. Now that we have satellite technology, I think that's kind of was like a, we a weird look into the future of how time would be. So it's kind of interesting. One little uh, minor pet peeve I have about the movie, though, is there's scenes like this where they actually visualize David's dreams. And if there's maybe like two sequences, I think, in the whole movie where this happens, maybe three. But they actually show this, and I, I didn't really feel like it was necessary. I thought it was more fascinating to hear him describe these dreams than for us as the viewer to actually see them. David actually does spend quite a lot of time, as you'll see in the movie, actually observing Lisa and watching her. And he actually psychoanalyzes her quite often in this movie, and he analyzes everybody else except himself, of course. But uh, he is definitely interested in Lisa. And Eventually the two of them uh, bond and develop a, a very close friendship and an understanding. Now the only caveat to their relationship at this point is that David has to speak in rhyme, in verse, with Lisa. And this isn't very well written verse, this is just, uh, you know, clunky stuff. It's like, it's not Keats. It is like, uh, me the same, Lisa the name, and then David would say, 
me the same David David name. At one point, David even says, I see a girl, a pearl of a girl. So that's an example of the kind of rhyming. Now, David does spend a lot of time hypocritically psychoanalyzing Lisa's problems and expecting Lisa to, you know, trust him. But uh, one day, and I kind of thought this was kind of funny, is Lisa decides to turn the tables on David and suddenly realizes, wait a minute, he's psychoanalyzing me, so I'm really going to fix him but good. And I thought this was kind of a, almost a funny moment in the movie, but not really. But she decides to confront him and starts approaching him because she knows that he doesn't like to be touched. And he freaks out, so she basically finger walks him back through several rooms and it's a very cool and it's very beautifully filmed moment in the movie and uh, it's the conclusion of it is you know here you go psychoanalyze me yeah here you go so it was kind of kind of a funny moment as they uh, establish trust with one another a relationship is definitely starting to bloom here and this leads to uh, another scene I kind of thought was a little bit funny was uh, I started noticing in the movie every time they showed David walking outside like in the backyard area there I just kind of think it's funny that um, he actually brings out a different clothing outfit he's he's like real GQ when he goes outside I thought that was kind of funny <laughs> Now this leads us to another pivotal moment in the movie where the two of them are outside here and uh, her and David are conversing in rhymes and you know you can just tell by the way they're looking at each other that they're in love with each other and they've connected and uh, it's some precious moments here where they're looking at each other and Lisa says uh, David David what do you see what do you see and he says I see a girl a pearl of a girl and Lisa can't contain her exaltation as she runs to her therapist who's standing off to the side and she says that I'm a girl I'm a I'm a pearl of a girl and this is a very significant breakthrough because she at this point is really a split personality she's Lisa but she's also a girl named Muriel which is a coping mechanism that someone through an emotional issue has gone through and so this is a significant breakthrough in the movie between the two of them. Now I wanted to mention this, this leads us to another sort of beautiful moment in the movie where Lisa's starting to discover her womanhood and it's a beautiful quiet little moment where she's laying there and David's definitely done something to her and woken up something in her and possibly helped her helping her reconnect with herself as Lisa um, in research in this a little bit I, I looked on YouTube at Care Delay actually talking about this movie and the making of it and I found out a real juicy huge nugget about this movie and that's that he was actually during the making of this fell actually in love with Janet Margolin and they were like hot and heavy during the making of this movie and after. I mean, he just he just spoke about his great love he had for her, and um, I just thought that was interesting. And he says that you can actually see that in some moments, and so I spent time looking uh, at different moments where there would be pauses, where they would go from scene to scene, and you can kind of see where, what he's talking about, how they were kind of exchanging quick little glances and smiles at each other. There's many revelations and breakthroughs that David and Lisa make while they're here in this institution. And this helps uh, pave the way for their love to actually blossom and grow. And it's interesting to see and watch how this is going to develop and how this movie is going to conclude inevitably. And as always, I don't want to spoil the rest of the movie or give away the end, which is a really significant ending, and it would be a huge spoiler if I even gave you a clue to how that's going to wrap up. But uh, David and Lisa is a wonderful movie. It was a real surprising find. I never uh, even saw it before until, I think, I don't know, about eight years ago. So, And it was a real pleasant surprise, and I watch it often. It's part of my permanent collection, and I watch 
watch it from time to time. It even has surprisingly some good ASMR qualities to it, if you know what I mean by that. And so it's a really cool movie. I really liked it and enjoyed it. And it's available as a download. You can download it off your TV apps and probably just watch it right now if you want. Or it's movie that's it's a movie that's worth buying. And uh, it also comes in Blu-ray. And it has a wonderful transfer where they've actually reformatted it for widescreen. So I highly recommend it. And thank you. <laughs>